Welcome back, everybody. As you can already tell, this is not the sketch that I did for you guys. I don't really have anything to say for this video, so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to put something else in the background for noise, and I'm just going to explain real quickly how things are done and what I'm doing. First thing I'm going to be showing you guys in this video, once we get started, is how I do the eyes. A lot of the times I can just draw them, but I kind of prefer to do... I have pre-made shapes that I made for eyes, and so I'm going to use those that I have in Photoshop. So that's why you'll see I'm on, in Photoshop for this first part. Uh, not right now, but I will be once we start. And then I will move everything back over. And I also work on the shading a little bit as well, just sort of doing... Uh, I like to do like a fade of a color. I normally start off with black and then I change the color later, which we'll see in the next video. But, uh, and then I just cut out the areas that I want for like highlights more than anything. Then I'm going to come back and do the link, the, sorry, the inking itself. Inking is my least favorite part of doing a picture. One thing I want to say, my little tip when I'm doing the inking itself is I use a ton of layers. I probably get up to like 40 layers while I'm inking and then they're all flattened together at the end. So once I'm done inking I make sure that all the line art that's going to be colored anyways, except for areas that are kind of near each other, I do separate the eyes, like the actual, uh, the colored part of the eyes and the teeth and the mouth. I separate them and any scars that's on a character just because it makes it easier if they're separate on different layers. They can be all on the same layer depending. If the scar is going through the eye I don't want it on the same layer with the eyes because it just makes it easier when I'm coloring the line art later. Um, so I just do it that way. But yeah they're sort of all them flattened right down and I name the layers so I can find them again later on. So that's all I'm going to be doing in this video just inking the picture. That's it. There's no major other stuff happening. I will be talking in the next video and I want to make that clear now. Even if you don't like the way this video is done, the next video will be back to me talking again. I have things I want to talk about for that video. When I'm inking pictures, oftentimes I will listen to music or listen to someone playing a game or something like that. So that's what I'm going to give you guys. So the background noise I'll be playing is going to be me playing a game uh, that I've already played on this channel. I cut out any of the parts that don't make sense if you were unable to see it, like walking or scenes that just didn't have anything other than maybe some noise and it would be much harder to understand. I'm hoping that you will be able to listen to it and imagine what is actually going on around in the scene, even if you've never played it before. The intro is a little harder for that, but once I get into the game I'm able to look at things, allowing for better description of the location that they're in. It's sort of going to be like a, an audio drama or an audio adventure. The game I'm going to be playing that you guys are going to be listening to is King's Quest VI. It's about Prince Alexander, who in the previous game fell in love with a princess who helped his father rescue his family and castle. Both having been a slave to an evil wizard gives them a little bit of a connection, I guess. We won't go through the full game, of course. It'll sort of just give you a little bit of a taste of the game itself. There'll be a little link up in the top corner if you want to go watch the game yourself that I've played through. Anyway, that's enough from me. Let's get started. Long ago, in the castle of a kingdom called Devontree, Alexander, here you are. Oh, you're still not thinking about Cosima, are you? Mm hmm? I suppose I am. Son, it's been months. You've got to pull yourself together. After all, you only met her that once. I know. Have you discovered anything about the land of the Green Isles? No. No one's even heard of it. It's like she's just vanished. I wish I could help. Please try to think about something else, dear. I'll try, Mother. Alexander. Alexander. 
by the stars. Oh, Alexander, if you really go... It will be all right, Mother. I promise. Alexander awakens to find himself on an unfamiliar beach. For a moment, he is too dazed to remember how he got here. Then, he does remember. The shipwreck. The sea. Just as he had seen his men safely into the lifeboats, a gigantic wave picked him up and tossed him overboard into the churning sea. That was the last he'd seen of his crew. Debris from the shipwreck is scattered along the shore, but of the lifeboats and his men, there is thankfully no trace. He can only hope and pray that the lifeboats survived the currents, and that his men made their way safely back to Devontree. Alexander's royal insignia ring lies abandoned on the sand. It must have slipped from his finger during the shipwreck. Fortunately, it was not lost in the sea. Alexander picks up his royal insignia ring from the beach. A long plank lies on the beach. No doubt it once belonged to Alexander's ship. Alexander pushes the plank to one side. A box has been partially buried under sand. There's a copper coin in the treasure box. The coin bears the seal of Devontree and King Graham's noble face. Alexander takes the coin and leaves the ruined box where it is. The path splits here, forming a crossroads. One branch heads northeast towards a distant castle, and one leads northwest into a small village. A grand old tree stretches its luxurious limbs out over the crossroads. The castle appears to be of Moorish architecture. Its marbled walls and delicate inlaid mosaics are unlike anything Alexander has ever experienced before. His own home, though lovely and dear to his heart, seems rough-hewn compared to this delicate beauty. 
the castle doors are firmly shut and bolted. Two guards take their stance in front of the castle doors. They look quite fierce and have the stiff, blank expression of soldiers on formal duty. Alexander politely addresses the odd-looking guards at the castle doors, hoping to learn more about his predicament. Good day to you, guards. I was cast upon this island in a storm, and I'm a little confused about my location. Could you tell me what place this is and who lives in this castle? Hey, what is that you say? A castaway? A likely story. We haven't had any foreigners in this part since El Hazaret arrived. Ah, don't be so rude, Gruff. He's not asking for any secrets. You're standing on the Isle of the Crown, lad. And this is the Castle of the Crown. The royal family resides here. Or uh, rather, what's left of the royal family. The Isle of the Crown? But tell me, am I anywhere near the land of the Green Isles? This is the land of the Green Isles. The Isle of the Crown is the main island, foolish boy. Then Princess Cosima must live in this very castle. Aye, the princess is indeed our treasure jewel to God, and we consider it an honor. Excuse me, guardsmen, uh, uh, guard dogs. I've been traveling for months to see Princess Cosima. I would like an audience, please. I'm sorry, but the princess is not receiving visitors, particularly not strangers. I really must see the princess. Could I speak with someone in charge? Who are you that I should bother Captain Saladin, huh? My name is Alexander. I am a prince of Daventry and a friend of the princess. A prince, is it? I see. Yeah, and I am lord of this dusty path. Step aside. You'll not be getting into this castle without some proof of your claims. Alexander's ring is made of the purest gold and has the insignia of the royal family of Daventry on its face. Alexander decides to try his royal insignia ring on the guards. With all of his papers lost in the shipwreck, it is the only possible proof of his identity that he can think of. Perhaps this ring will convince you of my identity. It is the royal insignia ring of Daventry. I'm sure. Just let me take a look at that ring. Well, uh, I'm sorry, Your Highness. It's just that princes are so uncommon in these parts. Let me get Captain Saladin. The guard returns a moment later with a majestic-looking creature. Captain Saladin speaks with a voice that is gentle, but reflects a will of iron. Prince Alexander of Daventry, I presume. I'm afraid I'm unfamiliar with your country, but I'm sure Wazir Al-Hazred will want to meet you, if indeed you are a friend of the princess. Please, follow me. Lord Alhazred, a visitor to see you. Prince Alexander of Daventry. What is it that you seek, Prince Alexander? Pardon the intrusion, my lord, but I came to see Princess Cosima. Some months ago, my father, King Graham, saved my family and I from imprisonment under an evil wizard named Mordak. The same wizard that kidnapped the princess? Exactly. When my father rescued us, he also liberated Cosima and sent her home. Then your father has my gratitude, and that of the entire kingdom. But I'm afraid I still fail to see the purpose of your visit. <clears throat> well, I came to make sure that Cosima arrived safely and to pay my respects. Before we parted, she gave me an invitation to visit. I have no doubt she did exactly that at the time, Prince Alexander. However, things have greatly changed for Cosima since her ordeal in Mordak's castle. 
Kasima's parents both became ill and died while she was gone. Kasima is sequestered in mourning for them as befits a princess. She is not receiving visitors of any kind. Even if she were, I do not think your visit would be appropriate. You see, it is time for Kasima to take her responsibilities seriously. With her parents gone, she no longer has the luxury to be a carefree maiden. As was her parents' wish, Kasima and I are to be wed. We shall rule the kingdom together. I assure you, our marriage is all Kasima wants now. As a prince and a gentleman, it would be best that you leave before there is any further embarrassment. I see. I suppose that I was mistaken. I thought for certain that Kasima... Well, I apologize. A young man sees what he wishes to see. I'm sorry you've wasted your time traveling to the land of the Green Isles. May your journey home be swift. Perhaps I will take the opportunity to look around your fair land while I'm here. I would advise against that. The kingdom is rather, shall we say, inhospitable these days. But it is your neck. You may risk it if you please. Captain Saladin will escort you from the castle. Good day. You have had your hearing with Wizir Al-Hazred. I trust you will respect his wishes and not return. I have been instructed not to let you into the castle again. Good day, my lord. Captain Saladin whispers something to the guard dogs at the castle gate, and they nod with understanding. Alexander has a feeling they won't be letting him into the castle again. Alexander is standing on a sunny village street. There are open shops to his right, a hard-packed path beneath his feet, and palm trees waving over his head. To the north, a key-shaped arch leads to another part of the village. The sign above the door says, Ali's Books. Hello. I will be right up. Now, what can I do for you? Alexander is standing in a cozy little shop. Books of every size and shape line the walls. A crackling fire in the fireplace completes the tranquil scene. The bookshop owner is a thin, middle-aged man. His intelligent eyes are slightly blurry from long nights spent reading by candlelight. Good day, sir. I'm a stranger in this land. What can you tell me about the land of the Green Isles? That is quite a question, young man. Who are you, and what would you have me tell you? My name is Alexander. I know I'm on the Isle of the Crown, but I'd like to know whatever you can tell me about this island, and if there are other islands nearby. You are indeed a stranger. Anxious is the man who knows not the customs of the land beneath his feet. This island is called the Isle of the Crown, because the royal family's castle is here. Besides the castle, we also have this village and the docks over to the west. There are at least three other islands. The Isle of the Sacred Mountain, the Isle of the Beast, and the Isle of Wonder. At least three? Does no one know for certain? <laughs> this is no ordinary land, Alexander. The land of the Green Isles has always been a place of vague boundaries, as if islands come and go. Legend speaks of a fourth island, an isle shrouded in mists. I myself have never seen it, 
Then, too, the land of the Green Isles is said to exist on the boundaries of this world and the next. Even darker places are reputed to be closer here than anywhere else in the world. That's quite a claim. <laughs> claim, yes, but probably just local superstition. We who live here, on the Isle of the Crown at least, sleep well enough at night. Those first three islands you mentioned, how might I learn more about them? Ideally, a young man seeking such knowledge would travel to their shores and learn about them firsthand. Meeting the leaders of each place would be helpful, naturally. Unfortunately, the ferry no longer runs between the islands. There has been much political unrest, and it has been too dangerous to travel for years. Perhaps the ferryman can tell you more. He has little enough to do these days. And if you haven't been there already, you might seek an audience at the castle. Thank you kindly, merchant, for all your good advice. Ah, but advice is free, Alexander. Making use of it costs much more. Alexander is standing on a dirt street leading through the village. To his right is a fine house with a private yard. The yard is surrounded by a gated fence and is full of red rose hedges. The street continues off to the northwest, from which direction Alexander can feel a light sea breeze. There's a young girl in the yard. The girl is dressed in a long, plain orange robe with a thick headdress. From the appearance of her clothes and from a skittish, fearful look about her, Alexander gets the strong impression that she is a servant, or even worse, a slave. The serving girl appears to be stealing a quiet moment tending the rose bushes. You lazy thing! Get back to work and stay away from those roses! I've told you a million times, those flowers are too sweet for the likes of you! You've still got to do the breakfast dishes, make lunch, and clean the stables yet this morning! And get your veil back on! No one wants to look at your face! Yes, stepmother. Alexander is standing at the island's docks. Both the pier and the only boat in sight are in sad repair. A worn wooden vessel has been dry docked on a jetty. The boat is in sad shape. A hole in the hull and the condition of its boards make it obvious that the vessel is no longer seaworthy. Yeah, what do you want? Excuse me, my name is Alexander. The owner of the bookshop in the village told me you might be able to help me. I hear you used to run this ferry for the islands. I'd like to talk to you if you have a moment. You say old Ali sent you? I can't see why. The ferry's not running, you know. I understand. I'd just like to talk to you about the islands if you don't mind. Well, I guess it'd be all right if Ali sent you. Well, don't just stand there. Come on inside. What is it you wanted to talk about, young man? Alexander is sitting inside the ferry's cabin. The place displays the neatness of a seaman and the sparseness of a bachelor. There are few frills and comforts in the rough wooden environment, but the sunlight shines cheerily on the oaken beams, and the portholes admit a pleasant breeze. The ferryman is a disgruntled-looking man who is probably a lot younger than he appears. Despite his tired air, he watches Alexander patiently. I'm a visitor to these islands. I'd like to learn what I can about the area. So you said outside. What is it you want to know? Well, for one thing, why has the island's only ferry been dry docked? Huh. It just ain't safe to sail these days. What with the islands feuding and all. Wazir al Hazred ordered the ferry closed till things settled down. Me? I don't think she'll ever see water again. <sighs> but why are the islands feuding? You got me. Something about stolen property or some such thing. Tis a real shame. Things used to be so friendly. 
Then this unrest is recent. A few years is all, but it's been long enough. Perhaps if the ferry were repaired. This old thing? This ferry's been out of water so long she's no longer even seaworthy. Her boards have dry rot. She'd fall apart at the first taste of seawater. But there must be some way to get off this island. There's only one other way to travel that I know of. A magic map. The owner of the pawn shop can tell you more about that than I can, Alexander. Tell me more about the ferry. I remember when I used to ferry Queen Alaria and Princess Cosima themselves. There was no thought of danger back then. They used to go visiting to care for the needy and to keep up the friendly relations between the islands. I remember their last trip. Things had started getting nasty by then, and when they came back aboard, I gathered that the Queen and the Princess had been received a bit coldly. Princess Cosima was such a pretty thing, and she was terribly upset. But who could be spreading these lies, she asked the Queen, but the Queen had no answer. What do you do now that the ferry no longer operates? Me? I'm out of a job. The job my ancestors have held for generations. I'm the only one trained to avoid the reef and the rocks. But that knowledge does me no good now. Is there no other boat on the island? One that might be more seaworthy? Boats don't last long on these shoals, as you may have found out if you got here by ship. You can be quite sure that this old ferry is, or was, the only craft on the island. Tell me more about Princess Cosima. Ah, such a beautiful child, and so pure of heart. Why, a contrary thought has never crossed her mind. Her mother was the same, the king and queen. They served the islands, not the other way around. Always thinking about the people. Ah, <sighs> they are sorely missed. What else can you tell me about the land? Some say that the land of the Green Isles is near the edge of the world, and that the deadly currents are a result of a magnetism that sucks life from this world to the next. Of course, that's just silly talk. Well, I think I'll be going now. Thanks for allowing me into your home. Posh, not at all. It breaks the boredom, if you know what I mean. <sighs> The sign above the door says, Ali's Books. Good day again. How may I help you? An odd-looking man is reading in the stuffed chair. He wears a vest, balloon-style pants, and pointed shoes. There's something deliberately silly about the man, as though he were a performer of some sort. Good day, sir. Is there anything you can tell me about the land of the Green Isles? I'm sorry, but I have no time for idle conversation. I'm too worried about the princess. Excuse me again, sir. You mentioned the princess. I told you I'm not interested in talking to strangers. Determined to learn more about the strange man's relationship with the princess, Alexander shows the man his insignia ring and formally introduces himself. I'm sorry to insist, but my name is Alexander of Daventry, and... I appreciate the offer of the ring, Alexander, but I'm afraid I'm already spoken. Daventry? Where have I heard of Daventry? Flying flit mice. You must be Prince Alexander. Cosima told me about you when she arrived home. How came you here? Why, by a ship, now wrecked upon the sand. But you know Cosima? She truly spoke of me? Yes, yes, I, I saw her briefly when she first returned home. She mentioned a prince to me, a Prince Alexander of Daventry. I'm afraid that was before she was told about her parents' deaths. You see, she arrived home a few weeks too late. The king and queen thought they'd never see her again. It is said they died of heartbreak. I'm afraid she's blamed herself. What a terrible homecoming. If we had only known... <laughs> Terrible indeed, poor thing. Everyone in the kingdom seems to despair with her these days. The streets are silent. Where is she now? The princess is sequestered in mourning. It's a rather dated tradition, and not required, but the wazir says she insisted out of respect. I see. You've yet to say who you are, and how you know the princess. I? Oh, pardon me. My name is Chalo. I am clown to the royal court. 
and had been since the marriage of Cosima's parents, King Caliphon and Queen Alaria. Oh, those were the happy days. The pair of them were so full of joy and life, so in love, and Cosima's birth. It would be hard to explain how long they had waited, how they had hoped for a child. I mean, she was such a charming little thing, smart as a whip, kind and sweet. Oh, she means everything to this kingdom, Alexander, and to me. I'm so terribly worried about her. About her grief over her parents, you mean? Well, the truth is, I do not trust the Wazir or his plans for Kasima. I'm still living at the Castle of the Crown as Court Clown, his clown. But it is more to keep my ear to the ground than out of loyalty. I wish I knew what the princess thinks these days. <sighs> if only I could find Sing Sing. Cosima's pet nightingale. I might be able to send the princess a message. As it is, I must wait for the end of her seclusion. Now I'm afraid I must hurry back to the castle. I'll try to return to the bookshop again later. Thank you for speaking with me, Jalo. I hope we meet again soon. The sign says Pawn Shop. Good day! The pawn shop is a dimly lit place with a slightly musty smell. Curiosities litter every corner and every shelf. For sale are articles that range from the bizarre to the commonplace, from the priceless to the practical. An old man occasionally steals sidelong glances at Alexander from under a concealing hood. The pawn shop owner is a mysterious fellow. His face is old and inscrutable, and there's a glint of sheer iron in his gaze. Still, Alexander senses this is someone he can trust. Excuse me, merchant, but the ferryman mentioned that you might have a magic map of the land of the Green Isles. Why, as a matter of fact, I do. I keep it under the counter. It's been gathering dust so long that I nearly forgot about it. It was quite a few years ago, you see. The estate of a wealthy wizard fell into my hands when he died. It was useless magical junk mostly, which reminds me, I've still got some things of his in the back that I need to dump out. Anyway, the magic map was the one true treasure in the lot. The wizard was quite old and feeble and had enchanted the map to aid in traveling. It is said that one need only desire to be on an island depicted on the map to find oneself there. It is a very valuable map, as you can imagine. Unfortunately, no one is interested in traveling these days. It is far too dangerous with the current state of the kingdom. What would you take for the map? I would normally want something magic in return, but since I am hardly overrun with prospective buyers, I would be willing to take anything of equal value in exchange. Would you be willing to take my family ring in exchange for the magic map? Daventry, are you a king then? No, that's my father, King Graham. I'm just Alexander. Well, Prince Alex, she is a beautiful ring. Are you sure you can part with such a unique family heirloom? The ring does mean a lot to me. I didn't always have a family, you know. Still, it is only gold. There are more important things at stake now. Then you now own a magic map, Prince Alex. I will keep your ring out of sight for a few days. If you find anything else of great value in your travels, you can come back for your ring. I would hate to see it melted down for gold. Ah, and a warning about the map. It will only operate when you are out in the open and within sight of the sea. The limitation has something to do with the teleport spell ingredients. You might try the beach. Thank you. You are very kind. And I'll remember about the map. Suddenly, the old man in the concealing cloak sneaks past Alexander, and with a sneaky dart of his hand, steals a mint from the candy jar. The old man stuffs the mint into his mouth and wobbles unsteadily out of the pawn shop. Master! <laughs> I followed Prince Alexander as you <laughs> wished. From the pawn shop owner, he just abstained. I uh, just reprieved. <laughs>
he just got a magic map. You fool. You've been eating those mints again. I ordered you to stop that. Yes. <laughs> Master. Now, what is this about a magic map? With a map, Prince Alexander could travel anywhere as quickly as... <gasps> quickly as I can. I thought I took care of the only means of travel. By my scimitar, I can't have him stirring things up now. Get a hold of yourself and listen carefully, Shamir. Go to the other islands and tell them... Taking off your adventurer's cap so soon?